If you are planning on a retirement in the next one to five years, here are the retirement rules that you need to follow to make sure that you have that super smooth retirement. Now, if you don't already know, I am the meanest early retirement advisor because I don't want you to retire too early and go, oh, should I have thought about this one market downturn? And if that happens, am I going to be okay? Should I consider this tax strategy? I don't want you to have any of that head trash. I want you to retire with total confidence. These are the five rules that are going to help you do exactly that. If you're looking for more guidance on everything early retirement related, healthcare, tax strategy, withdrawal rates, investing, you're in the right spot. This is what I do and I invite you to subscribe. The number one rule is to avoid simply maxing out. Most people go, yep, I'm gonna keep maxing out my 401k. Yep, keep maxing that Roth IRA. Yep, I'm just gonna keep, and it's because it's what you've done and it's not a bad thing to do, but I don't want you to become qualified rich cash poor. You've probably heard of house rich cash poor before in a real example, and you know that's my favorite way to teach so that you guys can learn, my parents are house rich, cash poor. They are working in their 70s in part because they were burned by a few financial advisors, which by the way is why I became a financial advisor. They're working in their 70s, they have a lovely home in Malibu, California, but they refuse to sell it. So their net worth looks really good, but they're not actually able to retire. Luckily they like what they do. But here they are working, they're still in their 70s. A lot of you go, hey, I don't want that to be me. I wanna start retiring early and doing what I wanna do. And so what I don't want you to do is go, hey, I'm in my kind of early 50s and now I just wish I could retire, but you know what? I don't have enough money because it's all locked up in my 401k or my Roth IRA or my IRA. And so what I don't want you to do is simply keep maxing out your 401k where you are too qualified, meaning you have too much in 401ks and IRAs where now you actually can't even tap into these funds. So a real story is a client came to me, they had $3.8 million in their 401k and they wanted to retire at 53. They didn't have any other savings. They just maxed out their 401k their whole life. And so what happened to them is they had an opportunity to say, yep, I'm gonna retire. I'm gonna take a big hit where I'm gonna, yes, pay taxes, but also a 10% penalty on all of those, that, that whole account. And they really didn't wanna do so, but they said, you know what, I'm gonna have to do it. If that means I'm gonna get to retire early and I advise them to do it, even though they were gonna pay the penalty because they really didn't love their job, they were stressed out and they just couldn't get themselves to do it. And so if he would have just saved two, $300,000 outside of a 401k, he could have been in a really powerful position to retire early with a whole lot more confidence, not pay this massive penalty. So hopefully it makes you start to think, okay, yeah, I could keep adding my 401k, but do I need to? Maybe I should start putting funds into what I call the superhero account. That's a brokerage account that allows you, there's no limit to what you can put in it. You don't get a tax deduction, but it allows you to start to go, you know what, if I put money in there and it grows and grows and grows, there's no 59 and a half kind of weight period. Now, pro tip, if you are working and you're still actively working and you are 55, if you turn 55 in the year or after that you're still employed, you can use the rule of 55 where you can actually pull money from your 401k at 55, not 59 and a half, as long as you are still working there in the year that you turn 55 or later. That's a pro tip, but I still don't even often recommend that because when you pull from your 401k, it's as if you just made more money. It gets taxed at ordinary income rates versus the brokerage account. If you put in funds there and it grows and grows and grows, it's capital gains treatment, which is lower than ordinary income. So wanna make sure that you're not just maxing out because you've done it for 20 plus years and you start to go, yeah, maybe I should diversify because I wanna do a home renovation or I wanna travel or I wanna make sure that I can, you know, prepare for retirement for this big trip I wanna do. So don't just max out your 401k because you've done it in the past. That's the mistake number one, and that's the first rule to follow. The second one is understand your expenses. Most people go, yeah, I'll spend 10,000 a month in retirement. You won't. You'll probably spend a whole lot more while you have your energy and health, then it might come down and you're kind of late 70s, early 80s, where you're just not traveling to the same degree, then it might shoot up again when you go, wow, I've got some big medical expenses, or you know what, charitable giving is important to me. I don't want to die with $5 million. So don't marry your expense number. Have a good base to understand what it is, and I have a resource to help you do that. So you can see right here, this is my cash flow planner. You can download this for free. I don't put a paywall behind that. I want all of you to retire early with confidence. This is the same sheet I have my clients fill out. So you can go ahead and fill this out, and it'll help you understand, okay, what expenses are there are not going to be there because you might be bringing in 200,000 a year right now and go, yeah, I need 200,000 in retirement. You don't. You're probably adding to your 401k. A portion's probably going to savings. You've got health insurance. You, there are things being taken out 
And so in the future, it's not like you need to replace your current paycheck. And these rules of thumb, I, I don't subscribe to those. I don't do a cookie cutter approach. You guys might even know that. You can see me looking around. I've got my jar here. Some of you have already seen this, but it says anti cookie cutter jar. Um, <laughs> this was one of my coolest gifts I've ever received where someone's like, hey, I, I love that you don't do the average, hey, what's your risk tolerance on a scale of one to 10 and shoots out a number. And so I don't do cookie cutter planning. You want to retire, you want to spend a comfortable amount. I want you to do it. I just want you to do it with total confidence. So understand your expenses and how they might change over time. This is called the retirement smile. I've talked about this in previous episodes. This is a lot more applicable to you if you're considering an early retirement. So if you run a projection of 10,000 a month is what you need or 5,000 a month, that's really not the way to do it because it's going to change throughout retirement. Number three is don't always do the financial answer. And so what I mean by that is you might have a mortgage right now and you might go, wow, I'd really love to have this paid off. And if you look at conventional logic and your mortgage rate is 4%, you can look at what the market's done and say, well, the market's on average done, call it 10%. Um, if we're even conservative, let's assume we're getting seven or 8%, I should absolutely just keep paying down the minimum to my mortgage and investing the rest. That's conventional logic. But the role, as I see it, of a good financial advisor is say, hey, here's the financial spreadsheet answer. You want to retire when you want to retire? Awesome. Here's what needs to happen. You need to you know, pay this amount to the mortgage, invest the rest. But sometimes I'll go to a client, I'll go, hey, it's not as big of a deal as you think. And they go, what do you mean? I go, my job is to quantify the trade-off so you can understand the magnitude of all these decisions. And does that make sense? And they'll go, yep, makes sense, but like expand on that. And I'll say, well, you could absolutely keep paying down the minimum to your mortgage and investing the rest, but I know you. I know you're going to sleep better not having that mortgage um, at all. And no one ever celebrates when their investments go up by $100,000. You're in a fine spot anyway. Please go pay off the mortgage. You're going to sleep better. It's going to actually help you understand more of your actual expenses. That's one less big expense that you have in your plan. Here's what that means for your plan. And you might go, wow, that, that only leaves, you know, 20,000 fewer dollars over time compounded. I'm, I'm, what am I even doing? I'm going to go pay off that mortgage tomorrow. I'm going to sleep great. I'm going to celebrate. Other times I'll tell a client, hey, this is like an $800,000 decision based on the rate you're going and kind of all these moving pieces of what you want to spend. I recommend you don't pay off the mortgage. So I'm not Mr. Nice Guy. I'm saying, hey, I know you. I know your goals. You're going to sleep better paying off the mortgage. Here's where it makes sense for you. Here's where it doesn't. So being able to quantify that, those are some of those conversations I'd want you to kind of have with yourself if you don't already have an advisor bringing them up to you. Understand the timing of income isn't linear. What does that mean in perfect English? Many of you know, but I don't like when, and I went to a doctor a few months ago and they said, hey, I told them, I said, hey doctor, that sounded great. I think you think that sounded great. I have no idea what you just said. So I need you to try again in a language I understand. So I try to do the same for you guys um, because I watch a lot of videos on YouTube and I listen to podcasts and I get frustrated when that's the case. So my fourth tip here is most people go, yeah, I just don't know. I'm gonna retire, but like, where's income gonna come from? I go, well, maybe it comes from your portfolio to begin, and then Social Security gets turned on, and then maybe there's rental income, and then maybe there's a pension. And so being able to layer all of these things in and understand the timing is really important to shifting your allocation. And that is what I'm getting at. Most people, they retire and they go, well, let's assume you have a million bucks, just keep it really simple, and you wanna spend $50,000 in retirement. Well, if you don't spend $50,000 a year, that's 5% of a million dollars. Some people go, Ari, that, that doesn't seem sustainable. I go, you're right. It's not sustainable if that was the case forever. But if you're spending $50,000 for the first, let's call it seven years, and then Social Security gets turned on and that's providing $3,000, well, now if $3,000 is coming in, so $36,000 a year, that's $14,000 that has to come from somewhere else once Social Security is turned on. So now your portfolio, yes, it was kind of holding more weight at the beginning, but now Social Security is helping out. And so that should change your spending. That should change your habits over time. Most people don't update any of that. Here's what most people do. They close their eyes. They hope markets perform well. And if they don't, they get really scared and go, wow, should I change my spending? Versus what I would encourage you to do is think about it like you're owning your own business. What I'd like you to do is actually go, you know what? Markets are doing really well this year. I'm gonna, just like as if I'm working, I'm gonna take this bonus, I'm gonna take an extra trip, or I'm gonna have extra fun, or I'm gonna send it to family, or I'm gonna do what I wanna do with it. And then in other years, when markets aren't doing well, or your business isn't doing well, you're not gonna give yourself a bonus. If, for example, you're owning a bakery shop and it's not doing well, you're not gonna say, yeah, this next year I'm gonna, you know, market's doing terrible, or business is doing terrible, I'm gonna just pay myself 200,000 more dollars. 
you're not going to do that. It's the same way with your investments. You need to work with the market versus against it. And so that's what the really successful early retirees do. And then number five, please don't marry any strategy. Most people go, yeah, this is what I want to spend. You might retire and go, turns out I don't love any of this stuff. Like I thought I was going to want to hike and I thought I was going to do this. It turns out I love pottery. And this pottery club is the coolest pottery club ever. And I have one client that is part of a pottery club. And they're like, yeah, it's kind of exclusive, but it's not that expensive. It's 6,000 bucks a year. So it's a membership. I love being part of it. Turns out my body doesn't love hiking as much as my mind does. So just particular client in mind. Another client was like, I love Hawaii. I can't wait. I'm going to move to Hawaii. I'm going to love it. They loved it for six weeks, not forever. Big financial hit. So start to test out retirement. Um, if you're even thinking about it, like most people retire and then go figure it out. If you're one to five years out, or even if you're 20 years out from retirement, ask yourself, how much do I really want to spend? What do I really want to do? Not just, yep, I think I want to golf. Yeah, I think I want to golf, but like, what are some other things? What are the pro tips? Well, the pro tips is most people go, I'm going to start to plan out my day. I actually have an episode where I interviewed my current clients who actually retired early. You can see it right here. And they talked about how they really weren't bored in retirement and how they actually had way less time than even when they were working. And it might give you some interesting perspective. So I'd encourage you to watch that if that's of interest to you. And those are the five rules. So hopefully this was helpful. I want to always make content that resonates. If, of course, you're looking for a custom strategy, reach out to us. We love helping you out. And lastly, I know I don't get to work with all of you. So if this was remotely helpful, please do subscribe and like this video for more content just like this.